Hey everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and this is going to be another video all about the iCare K1 Pro. Stay tuned as I set up and test the Z-axis syncing on the K1 Pro machine. Thanks for tuning in. In the last video on the iCare K1 Pro, I set the machine up with Lightburn software. I then set up and tested the autofocus feature on here and then set up and calibrated the red crosshairs that are located just to the side of the laser module. It's a super cool video. Check that out with the link up in the corner of the screen. In this video, I'm going to be setting up and testing the Z-axis syncing feature. What this feature does is when I'm doing multiple passes on a cutout, in between each pass, I can program this Z-axis, the laser module, to lower down a little bit closer to the work. And what this is going to provide for me is a lot deeper and cleaner cutting action. To test out this feature with cutting, I'm going to be using a quarter inch piece of birch plywood followed up by cranking the power up on the laser module and using a three quarter inch plain pine board. Now, historically, it's been very difficult or if not impossible to cut through this thick of a solid pine board. But in the pre-testing I did for this video, this laser module, this is a 24 watt laser module. It cuts through it quite easily with multiple passes using that Z-axis syncing feature. Inside the software, I already have the K1 machine already connected and the one feature in the setup that we need to turn on to activate this Z-syncing can be found under Edit, Device Settings, and it's up here in this corner, Z-Control, we want to check this box, Enable Z-Access. That's all we need to do to activate the feature on the K1 series machines. This all looks good and I can hit OK. I already have a sample graphic loaded into the workspace here. This is a local park that I do a lot of volunteer work, so I thought it'd be neat to make a little wooden cutout for them. This metal section here in orange is going to be engraving but right now I'm more interested in this outside blue layer here. This is going to be a line. When I double click on that, we're going to see this area here with the Z offset, Z step and kerf offset. Previously, this was all grayed out because we had that Z axis disabled in that sub menu I just showed you, but now it's all active. Let me take you through some of the settings. In order to use the Z-axis syncing, you do have to use at least two passes. Here I've got two, and I'm not concerned about the Z offset or the kerf offset. When using this feature, I want to take a look at the Z step per pass. Now, this means that after it completes the first pass, this is the distance that it's going to lower the Z-axis, or in our case, the Z-axis is hooked up to the laser module, of course, and I have it set up to lower it by four millimeters. It's important to note that at a default focus length, the gap between the material and the very bottom of the laser module is going to be eight millimeters. So I always like to leave a two to three millimeter gap, that way any of that smoke and smoke residue can easily get out of that area that's underneath this little viewing window at the very bottom of the laser module. This is all set up and ready to go. I'll click on OK, and I'll show you just a quick setting that I have on this engraving layer. When I go inside here, we'll see that I have a speed of 250 millimeters per second. That's pretty fast. It's also very smooth on this K1 Pro machine. I have the max power set at 40%. I am going to run the air assist. I just generally like to run that all the time. I have bi-directional fill set and I have the cross hatch on and I have that activated because I'm running a fairly low lines per inch at just 150. But when I run that cross hatch on this wood that I'm using, 
I find that it gives me the speed that I'm looking for with some pretty good detail. It also keeps the video a little bit shorter. I've got overscanning on, and this of course all looks good. I'll click OK. We just checked out this menu here with the number of passes. I am doing a speed of 10 millimeters per second, so that is actually moving along pretty good, and I'm running a max power of 100%. I'm going to get some work material into the machine and set the autofocus and we'll be ready to start this first cutout in just a second. I positioned the laser module so that the autofocus sensor that's right next to this red crosshairs will hit my work material. So I'm now ready to hit the autofocus button inside Lightburn. You'll see that the laser module moves all the way up to the top, finds that home spot, and then it will move all the way down and double tap the work surface to set that perfect focus. The last thing I'll need to do is place a laser enclosure over the machine to capture and exhaust all of the smoke and smoke residue. This all looks good and I'm ready to hit the start. This first cutout is all complete and that lifts right out with no effort at all. A nice clean cutout and in between the two passes to create this project, hopefully the video will show that this top screw here to lower the module down was turning and on the other camera we'll actually see that the gap between the bottom of the laser module and the work material closed down sending all of that laser energy deeper into the work material to make a nice clean cut. Here's a nice close up. I love how some of the wood grain of the birch is coming through and I've got a lot of nice clean crisp detail on the engraving and the cutout is a nice clean line. Let me take a look at the backside and really no marks coming through on the backside and that's a credit of using the air assist kit and honeycomb. Now that the quarter inch piece of birch plywood is complete, it's going to be time to find out where to set this. Next up is that three quarter inch pine board. I'm going to get this set up into the work area and I'll show you what light burn settings I'm using for this project. Back in Lightburn, I selected my layers for using that three quarter inch pine board. For the blue engraving layer, when we go into there, I have a speed again of 250 millimeters per second. However, I crank the power up to 75%. I do want to engrave deeper into this wood. I still have the lines per inch set at 150. This looks good. When I go to the red layer that is going to be cutting out this shape, I have a speed of eight millimeters per second, a power level of 100%, and I'm going to be doing 10 passes, and in between each pass, I'm going to be lowering the laser module down by half a millimeter. So after the 10 passes, I will be lowering the laser module down at about four or five millimeters. This looks good, and I'm ready to start the project. The three quarter inch pine board is all complete. Let's take a look. And I could see it as I was picking up the board, it already started shifting around and it's pretty uncommon to have materials this thick and have it removed just that easily. 
And this is truly amazing. I'm checking this out for the very first time. And there is brown on the edges, but there's not this huge amount of char. So that Z-axis syncing for lowering the laser module while cutting is definitely a really cool feature. Let's take a closer look at this. Here we go, that's this nice close up of it. I love all the detail of the engraving. With that extra power, I'm able to drive down into the wood a little bit and I can start getting some of that wood grain texture popping out as the different textures of the wood pop through. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I have all of this fine detail. When I check out the cut lines, making sure it's in focus too, this all looks good. Now it does look brown, but it's not charred or burnt. When I rub my thumb across on it, we'll see that it is clean and all of my fingers are clean, minus a little spot there. But there's not this massive amount of charred when I've tried this in the past with other lasers. Checking out the back side, it's a nice clean cut through all the way around. There's only a couple little spots where I have a little bit of smoke residue coming through. And I think that happens to be where there is an intersection on the honeycomb. Overall, very impressed with the results. I've been having a great experience in using and testing this iCure machine. If you had a great time watching this video, please consider liking this video, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. I definitely appreciate that. Until next time, learn create and share.